morning, uh, Mr. Angel Carbonu. My yeah. name is Patrick Asford Buidu, and I work with PAP MCG Agent. We are live on Facebook, then also on YouTube, as well as Radio Gold Online. Uh, basically, we want to talk to you briefly about some issues cropping up in the news um, at a space that has to do with some issues that you are calling on government to, as a matter of agency, um, resolve, else you are hitting the grounds or streets demonstrating. Mm -hmm. Briefly, I just want to find out from you, as the president of NAGRAD, how is your day, daily activity like? Oh, my daily activity <coughs> is to take care of this office, run and administer the office, and also to ensure that challenges and issues affecting teachers who are members of the association are addressed on a daily basis. Or as and when the complaints come, as and when the challenges come, it is my responsibility and of course that of my officers to address those challenges and find solutions to them. All right, so every institution I believe has its own peculiar challenges. What is your challenge? Or what are your challenges as, as an association? Well, as an association, we are more or less the intermediaries between government and our members. So our members expect that uh, we should get for them what they deserve. Uh, what they deserve, sorry. So when uh, we are not able to get for them what they deserve, they then get frustrated because they feel that they are members of the unions for the unions to fight for solving the problems and challenges that they have. Uh, you always don't go to government and succeed or get what you want. Government also uses whatever means is available to him or for, to them to twat your efforts. So this sometimes comes up with challenges, especially with our members down there. But that is the nature of unionism, and we understand that very perfectly. That's true. And we have three issues that we want to look at this morning. The first one has to do with the SIC insurance policy for teachers that the Ghana Education Service is actually introducing or has introduced. Then the second one has to do with the issue of a recall of SHS3 teachers from holidays. Then the last one will look at the promotion on promotion and non-payment salary arrears of non Ghana Education Service personnel into the Ghana Education Service management. Let's take them one after the other. The first one has to do with the um, SHS, I mean, um, SIC insurance policy for teachers. What is your concern on this particular one? Well, our position is that um, when you want to take someone's money for whatever purpose, whether the purpose is good or bad, uh, it behoves on you or you are enjoined to uh, inform the person for the person to agree that you can do it before you do it. So this became a tussle between us and the Ghana Education Service. Then they said, okay, now they are going to come out with exit forms so that uh, the exit form will be given to all teachers, especially those who do not want to be part of the scheme, so they'll fill an exit from the scheme, okay. a compromise we all agreed to. The exit forms have been distributed nationwide, and a number of teachers have exited okay. from the scheme. Mm -hmm. So they decided to roll out the scheme this July ending. But unfortunately, we've realized that both those who exited the scheme and those who did not exit the scheme were all deducted the 10, the, the ten Ghana CDs. They just said that they don't want the policy. Yes. And those who actually says that they, they want, want the policies policy. were all Ghana were deducted. So we felt that this is a breach, a breach on their of, of, of their own um, uh, uh, prescriptions, because they came up with a prescribed procedure and they have violated the procedure. So we are asking the Ghana Education Service and SIC Life to suspend mm -hmm. the deductions and refund the teachers' monies back to them. I just want to find out, before they, they, they brought this particular policy up from the SIC life insurance policy, um, were you contacted? Were there any meetings with the authorities, that is the NACRAT, to, as it were, find out whether you are enthused about this particular policy? 
No, the, 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 the issue was initially the plan was that government was going to pay that 10 cities on behalf of the Ghanaian teacher. So it's the government that is going to pay. So pay. it's free. You are uh -huh. going to then later on, the narrative changed to that government is paying something, but the worker will also have to contribute something. But you've not said that you want to, I mean, do that particular policy. No. So obviously, no. it shouldn't be... Yes. You know, so that is how the interaction went initially. But unfortunately, they didn't leave out, they didn't even obey their own uh, uh, rules. Uh, Mr. Kabon, would you be able to tell me how many uh, members of your association actually were not... All, all GS workers were deducted. Is it the, the issue, is it only has to do with NAGRAT? No, all teachers and non-teaching staff. Okay, because I, I'm reading that NAT is also part and CCT. All teachers, okay. all teachers. Okay, all right. So in a nutshell, um, what has been the response from? Because I remember um, we spoke with uh, some, uh, is a PR for um, mm. Ghana Education Service, and she was of the view that, I mean, like you just said, um, those who are not in favor of the policy should come for, and that is exactly yeah. mm. what I saw. So I don't understand why they still want well. to go. They will have to come and explain to us why. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now let's look at the second one. That's uh, the <coughs> issue of recall of SHS three mm. teachers from holiday. I mean, why that? It's a shock to us. We think it's absolutely unnecessary. When we have timetable for school days and vacation, let's respect it. If anyone wants to do anything during the vacation, let it be his own his own problem. So we were shocked and surprised that. The Director General will write that Form 2 should return to school uh, on the 19th of September. And we have written back to him, indicated to him that it is wrong. In any case, if you want to engage the services of teachers, you will have to negotiate those services of the teachers. And the teacher should know how much he is going to be compensated for the service that he has agreed to render to you. Yeah. Okay, I get it, but uh, I also have this information, or it came out in the public domain, that uh, especially for the double track system, because it has to do with the fact that uh, when you are on holidays, basically some of the teachers will also be on holidays. So when the other shift is in, in, in school, that means that they have also have to come back. And for that reason, either they are going to employ more teachers or, or they are going to increase their salary or give them some allowances. How has the situation been? Let us all stop mixing the fluid. We should run a system that is transparent, that has certainty, that can and has focus. This daily shift in experimentation and so on and so forth is affecting our work. It's affecting our work. We have the school period and we have vacation. I think that let us all abide by it. Are you trying to say that the double tracking system is having an untoward? No, uh, these people are not on double track. Those who have been asked to come back to school, they are not, they are not on double track. track. They are the form two students going to form three, so they are not on double track. Okay. So how are your members also coping with the double tracking system? Well, that is an uh, educational system the government is put in place. So, there is a teacher who teaches gold track and has its number of periods. Mm -hmm. Teachers teach uh, the green track, they have a number of periods. So, uh, that is up to the government and parents to decide. Uh, the problem with that is that you have children in school or who are supposed to be in school and because they are on vacation, they are at home, you know. So, I think that uh, we don't want to concern ourselves with that idiot. Because people will end up mixing the, sure. the issue. These are issues and we want them addressed. Right. So finally, let's go to the, the third one that has to do with the promotion and... Yeah, and the, 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 the third one, let me, there's a separation. Mm -hmm. We have the promotion issues mm -hmm. and then we have the, the, the appointment of non-GES person, person into G. Let me take that one first. All right. Every service, Ghana Health Service, Ghana... Uh, uh, audit service, local government service, Ghana education service, judicial service, and whichever service, they are professional and career 
institutions. They are professional and career institutions. You know, or you can come in, please. You know, so they are not an extension of political parties. They are not extension of the ministry. So when you come to Ghana Education Service, it is made up of people who have been trained as educationists, who have gone through the system to where they've got into. So for example, someone could have joined a GES 20 years ago as a classroom teacher and had risen through the rank and become an assistant headmaster of a school, uh, gone to a district director, regional director. The GES has its own qualifications to become a frontline director. The people the president appoints from outside usually are the director general. But even the director general, the government always is minded to appoint someone who has education background. So maybe they could be professors from universities and so on and so forth. Right. So when you have a director for quality and access, that director knows and understands the nuances of education and can apply himself to them. Definitely. So is all other directors. But when you start bringing people from outside who have decided to choose different careers and then you bring them to come and superintend over people who are in the system, you are demotivating those who have decided to stay with the system regardless of the challenges that has bedeviled it. And we are having difficulty with that. Public service positions, civil service positions, are professional positions with professional ethics. We serve whichever government that comes to power. So that is why governments come, government go, personnel of the service remain. But this development, is it now that is happening or is it been there for some time? This, we have realized an upsurge in this scenario. Mm -hmm. And we are cautioning government to stop it, withdraw the people, and appoint those who are Ghana Education Service staff. Are you saying that they are this? people that government is appointing are not qualified to be there? It is not about certification. The person can even be a, a PhD holder. It's neither here nor there. It, is he part of the Ghana Education Service? Does he have any track record? Right, so it means that they have to follow the track. They That's it. The That's it. Just follow it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But these people are not following it. And it no, they just appoint. They just appoint. They just appoint. So it, it will, in a way, demoralize the workers who are in the system. Because look, everybody works and aims higher. Sure. Everybody works and can dream of being the top. However, it is not everybody who can be at the top. But the fact that the opportunities are available, mm. you are trying as a worker to avail yourself to those opportunities. But if it is not there at all, you don't even have anything to look up to. And you don't have any dream to have. And at the end of the day, it demotivates people within the service. But as an association, have you been able to get that opportunity to speak either with the Minister for Education or the Director for the Ghana Education? I service? have, as a president, I have raised this issue severally. Okay, and what has been the response? The response is to be negative. That is why we added it to our press conference. Okay, now let's look at the last one so that we can end the interview. So the last one has to do with the non-payment of salary. Uh, the, promotions. Yeah, the promotions. Yes. Look, you progress at your workplace. You progress in your career. So you come in at a level, you perform meritoriously, you are rewarded with promotion. Yeah. I get in it. Now, so promote, and then within our conditions of service, the period that a person can stay on a rank is supposed to be four years. 
In the fifth year, you are supposed to be moving on to your new rank. Unfortunately, people, there have been delays all over the years, and then it creates overlaps and backlogs. Then people who have gone through interview and have passed are not issued with letters. Mm. The letters are an attestation of passing an interview. That is serious. Yes. So I have somebody who had passed interviews about two years ago. Two years. Two years. She was not giving her a letter and she's gone on retirement. How possible? So now that she's gone on retirement, the benefit that she could have earned on her new rank, mm. she had to forfeit it. Wow. She, will, she had to forfeit it. So, as to why the Ghana Education Service is not getting promotion issues right, baffles me and offends my imagination. <laughs> this is very serious and pathetic as well. Yes. Look, my, my colleague who went to the foreign service, the coterminous ranks. You know, the public service, you can identify coterminous ranks. Other people, they've done the intermediate, but you can, you, you can look at the horizontal uh, uh, ranks. Where he has gotten to a level of two steps above me. Because I committed the, uh, 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 what do we Catholics call it? Uh, the, 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 the major sin by coming into Ghana Education Service. Is that how you see it? Yeah, by, by, by the results. By the results. By the outcomes. You determine the procedure. The success of any procedure is determined by outcomes. So you cannot say you are doing the right thing and have a negative outcome. What, what impact do you think this development will have on our education system? A flop, a fall. A demotivated teacher cannot be expected to deliver any uh, appreciable results by way of uh, teaching the students well or in other development. A, a demotivated worker cannot. You have given government up to 1st September, um, like a month, to actually um, do something about what you are demanding or about your demands. If government fails to do that, what is going to be the next line of action? Well, we will advise ourselves as we prescribed in our press conference. We indicated that we can no longer restrain our, restrain our members. And that is, will be the way to go. Thank you very much, Mr. Angel Carbono. Mr. Angel Carbono is the president of NAGRAD. Uh, my name is Patrick Asford Buido. I want to encourage you that you are live on PAP MCGH Live on Facebook and also on YouTube and as well as Radio Gold Online. Same time, we'll come your way with another interesting interview. My name, once again, is Patrick Asford Buido for PAP MCGH. Thank you. MCGH. Thank you. M